you guys have been to jazz concerts, right? And when somebody's taking a solo, whether it's a piano player or a horn player or a guitar player, they're building their solo, right? So they're starting like here, and it's going like this, and like this, and it's opening up like gigantic. <coughs> Someone like Charlie Parker, Bird, it's gigantic from the start. Or John Coltrane, it's gigantic from the start. But, you know, there are others who build their souls. This is the thing that happens. So you start here, but then you peak. But you peak in the same tempo and you use the progression. In Indian music, the whole performance of the raga, whether it's an hour long or 90 minutes long, it does what a solo in jazz do, does. It starts here and then builds up to the finale. So you will start very slow. That's the tempo that the instrumentalist or singer will set up. And the drummer will start accompanying that. And then, according to the whims of the main guy, the tempos will increase. So we may start at five, six, but we'll end up at Also, the music climax is that way. It starts with the low tones, very long notes and all that stuff. But by the time it gets up high there, 50 minutes into the piece, uh, it's frantic. It's reaching for that nirvana that's up there. That's the plan, the high note. So that's what you do. You, uh, the Indian music tempo also goes in that manner. All music is like that. We are all reaching or wailing, or uh, you know, crying, or you know, complaining, or whatever. It's all about the blues. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Indian music is all about the blues. All the compositions and whatnot are written about imploring God to come and help, or my lover has gone and he hasn't returned, and I am, you know, heartbroken and sad, or he's seen another woman and whatnot. You know, like that. These are the kind of songs and music that Indian music portrays. So this blues is deeply entrenched in Indian music, and and a lot of it comes out in 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 religious or more like uh, prayer songs, in which you ask God for what the hell are you doing up there? Do something about this, basically. That's it. And so, as you progress in your complaint and request and the list of things that you don't like about whatever it is, you know, it takes an hour, but you get frantic at the end because no reply has come back and you're still <laughs> in that, you know, and you get, you know, in a trance or whatever it is and, and that happens. So that's what it is, it's loose. It's, uh, and so, it's amazing how small the world is when it comes to music expression. Even though it's, you know, it takes days to get around. Okay, how many, I think. How yeah. many hours a day were you practicing as you grew up as a child? How many, how many hours a day were you practicing? How many child? hours a day do I practice? Or even as a ch as you were growing up? Well, it depends on what you call practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard stories about, you know, musicians in this part of the world and that part of the world. Constantly practicing, constantly with their instruments, constantly music. I would say that my practical practice, sitting with the instrument, may be limited drastically. Won't you think, Tara? Some days go by without me practicing or playing a concert every day. So that in itself is somewhat of a practice. Some days, I'm just too lazy. I'm not playing, I'm not sitting with my instrument. But that doesn't mean that I'm not practicing. When you're growing up learning, let's say? What when I was growing up, I practiced a few hours a day, but it was never like, okay, I sat down and okay, okay. from eight to 12, I'm okay. going to practice, no. 
I started, I played as long as I felt like it, then I went and played with my friends, came back, <laughs> sat down on the drum again, played, had some lunch, sat down, played again. So, <coughs> all through the day, I kept coming back to the drum. It was very important for me to keep coming back to the drum. And I did. All through the day. So, that kind of practical practice was sort of part of my daily routine. But this practice was very important. So most of the masters I've heard stories about, like practicing 12 hours ago, they didn't sit in front of an instrument and practice 12 hours a day. They just maybe practice two, three hours of physical practice playing their instruments. But the rest of the time they were thinking of the music. They were listening to, other, to the music. They were, in their mind, putting it together, dismantling it. You know, it's like, okay, you can close your eyes and disassemble or assemble a rifle. They thought about, you know, combinations and permutations and uh, up and down and sideways and, you know, down, you know, into the raga, looking at it multidimensionally and so on, in their head. So they call that practice as well. So they said, I was practicing 12 hours a day. What they meant was this. Yes, I played for a couple of hours or three hours, but mentally I was in my music constantly. So that's basically it. I can't imagine that any one of us can sit in front of an instrument and practice for 10 hours without losing concentration. As soon as you lose concentration, your practice is gone because you don't know what you're doing. So, just a basic practice of getting your hands to move without knowing what you're doing is okay. But this is mm -hmm. okay. Yes, sir. Uh, your bayan, the lower drum, yeah. uh, is, looks different than what I've seen. It's not shiny. Is it yeah, not because possible? it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's been on the road, but uh, I, yeah. it's copper. can you talk a little bit about This is a copper. Uh, there's a story behind this bar. Uh, it, this particular copper thing is considered to be um, very good for tone yeah. of, of bar instruments. So this is made out of it. But this was given to me by a couple of them who 